Hello everyone. Um, I want to make a short video. I'm in the second chapter of Mark. I have stated before that Mark is one of my favorite books of the Bible. So I'm going to uh, be in Mark 2, the second chapter of Mark in the King James Version. And it says, And he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. He is, is, is Jesus. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. Not only did he preach the word to them, he was the word, but there was no room in the house to get this, um, to get anybody else in. Jesus had a crowd. There was no internet, uh, no TV, no radio, no uh, way to get the word, but somehow people knew. I mean, in so much that 5,000 men, not counting women and children, went into a desert place to hear him preach with no prospects of food. Uh, you know that they didn't have a microphone in that day and that unless the wind blew his voice up their way, they probably couldn't hear a whole lot. But just to be in his presence. Today, we're in the coronavirus days. I said in a, another video, it's Wednesday, May 7th, but actually it's uh, Wednesday, May the 6th. And we're still in the coronavirus days. We can't get to church. But when we do get back to church, it should be this way. It should be a crowd pressing and not much room for anybody else, for many other people. And it said, And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which is born on four, born of four. So they had this man on his cot, um, four people, and they were carrying him, trying to get him into this crowded waiting room where Dr. Jesus was at, so they could uh, get him some help. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he, where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the man of the sick of the palsy lay. Now, palsy, I don't think so much, was a condition where um, that he couldn't move, and he couldn't. But I think they was describing that um, sort of like a, a stroke victim. Uh, the, the, the mind is still good and wants to say something or do something with his limbs and it has difficulty. Um, there, there has to be a connection. So, uh, so anyway, they tried to, they, they didn't take no for an answer. I mean, if people at our church was trying to get me in somewhere and, they said, uh, Brother Dale, we, we tried to get you in, man. You see that? And I'd say, yeah, I understand. I know you brothers did all you could. But these brothers were relentless. Uh, they didn't take no for an answer. They were unstoppable. They uncovered the roof. Don't you know that this man, uh, he probably would have appreciated if they hadn't broke up the roof. He might have said to them, you know, I hope you all know a good carpenter because uh, my roof's got to be fixed. But they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. The palsy, you lose connection. Like when you plug your cell phone or iPad up or whatever it is at night, and it looks like it's making connection, but you get up the next day and it's not charged up. Um, a, a minister needs to have a connection with the Father. A wife needs to have a connection with her, be able to obey. The the palsy, the body could not obey the head. And the wife needs to obey the husband. The husband needs to, they both need to obey the minister, be subject. And then he needs to be subject unto God. And uh, so they're trying to get him down there. It's, it's sort of like when you're trying to get somebody to, the, to God, whether it's in sickness or or their lost condition, you can only get them so far and you let them down to Jesus. And then it's, when they got that man to broke that roof up and let him down, then it was just him and Jesus. And that's the way it is. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their heart, said, why does this man thus speak blasphemous? 
who can forgive sins but God only? You know, the, 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 we call him the man on the cot, the crippled man. I said in another video, uh, he could have been the man with a um, very obedient children. He could have been the man with a beautiful smile, but he was known as the crippled man, the man on the cot. Uh, so I imagine when they started going up there to put him down, they probably said, put your arms like this because we're going to go through this narrow passage. You know, it might mess up your hair, but we're going to get you down there. I'd like to have four tear off the roof guys on my team. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to have people that just don't take no for an answer? I think in the ways of God, you got to be relentless. You got to be unstoppable. You got to be consistent and you got to be thankful. And uh, I believe in healing. I've, I've seen them. I've, you, you, a person would have gotten to me too late for me not to believe in healing. I've seen all kinds of that. I believe in miracles. Seen too many of them. I know I told you in another video that I had water on the brain very bad. And uh, so I want to tell you another. Uh, we believe in the laying on of hands it's in Mark 16, 16. I'm not too far from that, so I'll see if I can flip over to it. Bear with me. And it says, hold on, I'm almost there. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So that's my personal belief. I believe in that. I've seen it. Uh, I, I remember I was at church. I was a young man. I hadn't been in the ways of the Lord too long. And there was a little boy that was about two years old and he could not talk. Uh, he couldn't speak. And his mother, of course, she wanted him to. She had him under the bench because he... He, those kind of children, uh, oft times, they're loud and disruptive. So she had him under there. I guess he was asleep, and that was a good deal. And uh, so uh, the Lord told her, if you'll put him on your knee, this man was up testifying and said, he will lay his hand on him, and I will heal him. She didn't do it the first time. She didn't do it the second time, the Lord told her. But the third time, she put him up on her knee, and immediately the man laid hands on this little boy. Whether you believe that way or not, uh, would you allow me to believe that way? Because I do. But anyway, uh, so we expected healing. So reckon when it came, six months later or a year or, or something like that. No, that night he got to talking. He liked to talk to our ears off. And uh, he could talk to his mother Back then, they didn't do uh, ultrasounds to see what babies were, and so she was going to have another baby. Since the little boy could talk, she said, what would you like to name the baby? And he thought just a minute, and he said, Butta Dale. And she said, oh, no, you, you can't name a baby Butta Dale. It's got to have two names. And he said, Butta Dale. So that's how I picked up the nickname Butter Dale. A lot of people call, call me that. And this little boy, yes, he can talk. Indeed, he can. He's got some children of his own. He's a grown man. This was probably uh, 40 years ago or close. And uh, so God can do all them kind of things. And as I said, I'd like to have four tear off the roof guys on my team. The, the, the man on the cot. He needed four people that could do more than he can do. Uh, I just value people that can do more than I can do or know more than I know because uh, you can get stuck in uh, just in your own little world and that's as far as you can advance. But uh, for the sake of this, not going too long, if I want to tell you something else about it and I forget on this one, I'll just uh, tell you in a future one. May God bless you is my prayer. I hope you're getting something out of these. I'm glad to deliver them to you if you are. Until we meet in the next time.